and a beautiful day to all of you out there. Thank you so much for joining my channel. We are here studying the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and it turns out we're in my bathroom again. Will this be a new thing? I don't know. We'll see. So today we're on lesson number 184, and the title of the lesson is The Name of God is My Inheritance. But before I get into that, I wanted to grab my Ken Wapnick teaching manual and reflect back on yesterday where our lesson asked us to say the name of God, call upon God, just bring in the frequency of God into your life as things arise or just as an experiment to see if anything shifts in the way you're feeling. So the explanation of the name of God, the word God, is really beautiful in Ken's Lesson 183 teaching. So I want to share that with you before we get into 184. So here we go. In many religions, the name or names of God is regarded as sacred. In Judaism, for example, God's name, Yahweh, is identified for his being, and so it would be blasphemous for Jews to call their God by name, let alone pronounce it, since, since this presumes a form of equality with the Creator. This separation between God and man is thus considered sacrosanct, symbolized by the skull cap worn by Jewish men. Here, however, Jesus turns this idea around, telling us not only is it not blasphemous to call upon God's name, but it is the only holy thing we can do. God's name is ours, for we share one self, he the source, we the effect. Since ideas leave not their source, we remain one in him. For two separate beings would be inconceivable in heaven's perfect oneness. This corrects the ego's declaration we are separate from our source, the core of its thought system of individuality. Thus, the Holy Spirit's correction, you are not separate from God, whose name is yours, for you share one being and one reality. So I thought it was important to read that because as we are removing ourselves from our conditioning and programming, there are a lot of folks who are transitioning from other religious belief systems and struggle with things like this. So there's the Course in Miracles teacher explanation of why it is perfectly okay and wonderful to say the name of God and call on our higher beings as we go through our salvation journey, on our path, our spiritual awakening. Say the names, call them in. There's nothing blasphemous about it. All right, but of course, do whatever you want. Do what feels good. So let's jump into lesson 184. The name of God is my inheritance. You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each one becomes a separate entity identified by its own name. By this, you carve it out of unity. By this, you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name, all happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted by a name. This space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. You see something where nothing is as well as nothing where there is unity, a space between all things, between all things and you. Thus do you think that you have given life in separation. By this split you think you are established as a unity which functions within an independent will. So once again, we're back to separation. And I love that it talks about we have a name for everything and we use our letters to make words, which are symbols of symbols. And the idea that, as I'm looking in front of me here, there's a couple of flower pots and there's space in between the flower pots. But what Jesus is telling us here is not only are there no flower pots, but the space in between is actually a unifying force this vortex or this energy that actually bonds us all together doesn't separate us. So we're totally inverted in our uh, <laughs> education experience on the earth plane, but we're getting right with these lessons, don't you think? 
what are these names by which the world becomes a series of discrete events of things ununified of bodies kept apart and holding bits of mind as separate awarenesses you gave these names to them establishing perception as you wished to have perception be the nameless things were given names and thus reality was given them as well for what is named is given meaning and will then be seen as meaningful a cause of true effect with consequence inherent in itself and remember in an early lesson where we talked about meaningless thoughts and you know nothing has any meaning unless i give it meaning so it's bringing back those concepts into this lesson here. This is the way reality is made by partial vision, purposefully set against the given truth. Its enemy is wholeness. It conceives of little things and looks upon them. And a lack of space, sense of unity or vision that sees differently become the threats which it must overcome, conflict with and deny. Yet, does this other vision still remain a natural direction for the mind to channel its perception? It is hard to teach the mind a thousand alien names and thousands more. Yet, you believe this is what learning means. It's one essential goal by which communication is achieved and concepts can be meaningfully shared. And it's funny, I used to think of that when I was a student in school, like grade school, middle school, high school that learning was more memorization and being able to repeat what the book says or remarks that the teacher made in order to get a good grade. And so I, I love how we're able to kind of, Course in Miracles students are able to really look back in time and, and look at those idols like good grades that we worshiped and question, was it really, was I really um, learning or was I just a good memorizer and regurgitator schmoozer i was a schmoozer that's how i graduated high school you guys i did very little work i was the class clown i was a comedian but i schmoozed my way to a maybe like a 1.8 gpa like i barely made it it was all intentional by design yeah all right yet does this other vision still remain a natural direction for the mind to channel its perception it is hard to teach the mind a thousand alien names and thousands more. I just realized I just read that. Sorry about that. Let's go to the next paragraph. This is the sum of the inheritance the world bestows. And everyone who learns to think that it is so accepts the signs and symbols that assert the world is real. It is for this they stand. They leave no doubt that what is named is there. It can be seen as is anticipated. What denies that it is true is but illusion, for it is the ultimate reality. To question it is madness. To accept its presence is proof of insanity. Such is the teaching of the world. It is the phase of learning everyone who comes must go through. But the sooner he perceives on what it rests, how questionable are its premises, how doubtful its results, the sooner does he question its effects. Learning that stops with what the world would teach stops short of meaning. In its proper place, it serves but as a starting point from which another kind of learning can begin. A new perception can be gained, and all the arbitrary names the world bestows can be withdrawn as they are raised to doubt. We're all about questioning what we've been taught, conditioning, programming, all of that. We have to question it deeply as we study the Course in Miracles. Thank goodness for this book to encourage us to do that. Think not you made the world. Illusions, yes. But what is true in earth and heaven is beyond your naming. When you call upon a brother, it is to his body that you make appeal. His true identity is hidden from you by what you believe he really is. His body makes response to what you call him for his mind consents to take the name you give him as his own and thus his unity is twice denied for you perceive him separate from you and he accepts this separate name as his okay we could unpack that paragraph for like a year all right that's the whole purpose of really diving into our practice is to see where we have created a world of separation projected it onto everyone we know thereby validating our conception or perception of separation 
It's a, it's a fun little game that we play with, with our soul as we go through this experience. It would indeed be strange if you were asked to go beyond all symbols of the world, forgetting them forever, yet were asked to take a teaching function. You have need to use symbols of the world a while, but be you not deceived by them as well. They do not stand for anything at all. And in your practicing, it is the thought that will release you from them. They become but means by which you can communicate in ways the world can understand, but which you recognize is not the unity where true communication can be found. Thus, what you need are intervals each day in which the learning of the world becomes a transitory phase, a prison house from which you go into the sunlight and forget the darkness. Here you understand the word, the name which God has given you, the one identity which all things share, the one acknowledgement of what is true. And then step back to darkness, not because you think it real, but only to proclaim its unreality in terms which still have meaning in the world that darkness rules. Use all the little names and symbols which delineate the world of darkness, yet accept them not as your reality. The Holy Spirit uses all of them, but he does not forget creation has one name, one meaning, and a single source which unifies all things within itself. Use all the names the world bestows on them, but for convenience, yet do not forget they share the name of God along with you. So I love that part, but for convenience. So what, happenings, what happens to all of us during our awakening is we do want to totally renunciate and drop everything all at once but it's too much for our consciousness and it'll make our lives a little bit unpleasant because you're basically rejecting everyone you know except for your spiritual friends. So it's okay to continue along in the realm of unreal using words that you know probably prolifer or probably promulgate the separation belief. However, you know that you're on a learning journey and the Holy Spirit, your guides and teachers, Jesus, are all going to gently move you on this pathway where you can release at your own pace all these words and symbols and definitions that aren't serving you or totally in alignment with your unity with the Creator. So it's okay for your convenience. God has no name, and yet his name becomes the final lesson that all things are one. And at this lesson, does all learning end? All names are unified. All space is filled with truth's reflection. Every gap is closed and separation healed. The name of God is the inheritance he gave to those who chose the teaching of the world to take the place of heaven. In our practicing, our purpose is to let our minds accept what God has given us as the answer to the pitiful inheritance you made as fitting tribute to the son he loves. No one can fail who seeks the meaning of the name of God. Experience must come to supplement the word, but first you must accept the name for all reality and realize the many names you gave it, you gave it aspects have distorted what you see, but have not interfered with truth at all. One name we bring into our practicing, one name we use to unify our sight. And though we use a different name for each awareness of an aspect of God's Son, we understand that they have but one name, which has given them. It is this name we use in practicing. And through, the, through its use, all foolish separations disappear, which kept us blind. And we are given strength to see beyond them. Nor our sight is blessed. I'm sorry, now our sight is blessed with blessings we can give as we receive. And here's the prayer for this lesson. Father, our name is yours. If it, I'm sorry, Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all living things and you who are their one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality. And we are glad and thankful we were wrong. All our mistakes we give to you, that we may be absolved from all effects our errors seem to have. And we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them. Your name, 
is our salvation and escape from what we made. Your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace. Amen. So take all that in. This ended up being a little longer of a video, so hopefully you're still there with me grasping all these wonderful concepts, unlearning as we speak. And I do want to close the video with reading a little bit from Ken Wapnick's Lesson 184 teaching. I think it's a good way to wrap it up. Okay, so here we go. As we had discussed in the previous lesson, these things are nameless because they do not exist, and thus we realize their unimportance and valuelessness. The names we give them are of the same illusion. In this passage, Jesus teaches that once we think the world is real and have given names to its forms, meaning we think we understand their nature, they seem to be causative. For example, people's bodies seem to affect us. This could be a little triggering, okay? For example, people's bodies seem to affect us. Toxins and viruses seem to make us ill. They are a cause with true effect, the ego tells us, which is our suffering. Yet the effect is an illusion because its cause is illusion, and the consequence inherent in itself is never separate from its cause. Since there is nothing outside us in the world, nothing here can be a cause and therefore can have no effects. What we experience is thus made up. However, the ego maintains its illusory thought system by convincing us of the, of the opposite. What we feel is due to something outside us. So let's not go too far down into that road, but I will tell you, here we are in an election season. Many of you on this channel are questioning all the events of the COVID uh, experiment event, whatever you want to call it, that happened a few years ago. So we're now moving into another potential area of a lot of illusory things, a lot of manipulation and control attempts from the alleged patriarchy people in power and all of that. And I just, I love that the lessons are digging us back into those places where we fell for it because we believed in the meaning of these words and these concepts. And certainly the, the scientists and the doctors and everyone that told us how, you know, frail and weak our bodies are. Well, the Course in Miracles clearly states to us and through Ken Wapnick's teaching here once again, that our bodies are not real. It isn't possible for other people's bodies to hurt us. We have a shared um, collective fear-based energy that courses through us all and we're able to see it. That is what I think was the whole purpose of the medical experiment that was done back in 2020 is a, a beautiful miracle where we could all each individually go into our minds and discover what it is we're actually afraid of when it comes to our bodies and our assumption that some things are going to cause us to die and that other people could be part of that cause and all the misunderstandings that we have. So revisit that stuff with today's lesson and take in everything that Jesus taught us about what's in a name. Be confident. Feel like you're emitting and receiving extremely beautiful power when you say the name of God or Jesus or Holy Spirit and your own name because you in fact are not separate from the creator of the universe. So thank you for being here, joining me, hanging in there for this longer video and I will see you back here again on the next lesson.